Okay, so the next thing um, is obviously the, um, the guns and the various things that are going to fit into the wing here. Thing is, as you may have noticed, um, they are one piece wings that go on. The panels aren't open um, and it doesn't actually say anything about opening them up. So what you can actually do, um, if you get your knife, usual thing, and just follow the panel line nice and gentle. And the beauty with these are, these are very, very big panels and the actual it doesn't take a lot of plastic to cut through it taking a nice sharp blade gently just running it round and there we go we can cut it out and then obviously this is a, a two-part panel in reality so let's just cut that down the length of it and have it like that and because it's nice soft plastic it doesn't take too much and then if you wanted to like with this one here we can just take out the actual one panel you don't have to take them all out to show the ammo belt just like that and then what we can do is we can have this in the up position in the open position which will be something like that so we can see the guns that we're going to do in a minute and do the weapon bay because without it you won't see a thing and then these will then just fit right over the top and you'll be able to see the guns or in this case we'll be able to see the ammo belt on that side or we can open, open them both up whichever way we really want to do it so as you can see we've got the wing section assembled now now basically you've got the gun base very straightforward and you can open the panel the thing is as you notice here there's a slight misalignment between the actual gun um, the ammo belt racks if you like and uh, the actual hole they go in they're really uh, too far forward needs to come back so in some ways that's probably why they actually never opened up or told you to open up these panels um, because they are aware of the problem but anyway it's only a slight bit out and you could probably just get away with it if you put you know slide the door back for instance and should just show um, same on this one obviously if you're just going to take out one panel as we've done on this side the guns all line up and look very nice so we can put the ammo belt slip it on the inside and fix them in um, quite a bit of a, a tweaking needed to pull this front over um, I used a high powered clamp um, basically to squeeze that one together whilst it was all setting left it overnight to totally dry and then we can just bring these two halves hopefully together like that and on the underside they go up now there is quite a bit of a gap of this wing join and because you've got the actual the wheel well running across you can't bend them up as such it's not going to actually work like that so it is going to need a little bit of filler um, running around in those areas to try and find out the reasons why it's mainly on this um, uh, starboard wing rather than the port. The port side fits quite nicely. Um, starboard's a bit of a mess. But we can also, by checking out little seam lines just down on the insides here and on there, hopefully we can make a better fit. So the next thing we're going to do is going to get this all glued into its position. Now this is a nasty gap down here. So what I'm literally doing is um, a little bit of super glue down to make a quick weld. Now you could use a normal filler to do this, but purely because of time's sake so all we're doing is a mixture really we're putting on um, kick uh, the super glue like that then we're just brushing on a bit of CA kicker straight afterwards and that helps self level it as well well that's the theory because that's one hell of a gap down there as you can see you get little white spots as well as the others if I zoom you in you can really see how much filling we've done here so as you can see there's quite a bit down there um, down this side and then not so much on this side, that one's quite easy, but this side's quite a bit of filler all down there to bring it really into shape. Now, the other thing as well, because we've just used super glue on its own, I'm a bit worried about obviously it being um, an easy break um, to sort of come apart. So what we're gonna do is weld up this underside with our normal glue. Let me just bring you out. There we go, we're just gonna put a normal glue underneath here, just to wrap that round, and that'll hopefully take some of the weight off the top of that wing box and also it's a nice easy join down the bottom here so we just got that in and we'll let that work its way all the way around there now so if we let that go totally dry and off and then what we can do we can start to sand off this top join and seeing how we are
Okay, so as you can see, we've got lots of filler um, down in here as well. Now, the usual thing, put super glue in first, and then we've gone with um, a little bit of filler, which is our made up Mr. Surf so you like, which is just a thinned um, with a little bit of cellulose thinners of the normal squadron green putty. So that's gone in there now. It's going to be quite tough to do. And also what we've done is just run around because we had it on the go and just done all the seams. Um, some of them need them more than others, but it was just a case of, you know, it, it's going to make it look perfect. We might as well take care of everything as soon as we've got it out. So the usual thing, uh, we're just going to work our way around with various grades of sanding sponges and, and just a dig and cut through. This has been nicely drying now for a couple of days because of the Christmas break. So that means the filler will be nicely dried and should be quite easy to sand, if though a little bit dusty. So what we're going to do is going to work my way all the way around and just sand out and flatten down and smooth and then we can re-scribe and re-rivet. Okay, so there you go. That's all sanded off and down. Now it's pretty much a rough job at the moment because we're going to have to go around and polish the entire thing because it's going to be using our clubs. We want it to be a very nice shiny finish. So as you can see here, we've done on the... Um, the little areas that we've actually been sanding. We've got some acrylic black plank on there. Use black purely, it's gonna dry quick. Um, and then obviously on these leading edges here where the wing roots are, so we can really see what's going on. Um, and then we can have a look, looks nice and smooth, looks okay, then we can just polish off that black area and we can give it a good rub round with a very, very fine sanding stick. Um, and then we can really get it all put together. But that's most of it all done. And using the combination of a little bit of super glue um, with a little bit of um, with a filler over the top um, really helps to take care of a big gap and it's quite a nasty big gap in that leading edge one so also we've run it up around here around the tail as well so we can see if you're looking for any gaps and little cracks that perhaps may need a little bit more filler work right so we've got a few things on the go now um, I've installed the other flap and obviously being on this kit they all move which is quite nice ailerons I'll put on afterwards um, touched in a few little areas which I'm still not totally happy with so I'm going around and making sure they're okay okay front area here clear part cow and with the engine compartment and everything else thing is it's not exactly clear um, by a long shot also there's some seam lines running through it so it's not the best thing um, I what I'm going to do with this one I'm going to do it as a loose fit so it can either be on or off the model perhaps I'll put one half of the engine on and I'm going to spray it metal color and obviously the interior color as well separately and have it and not have it as this see-through area because quite frankly you can't really see through it what I've done put some tape on the inside to stop any overspray going in a couple of bits of blue tack or white tack in this case on the side to hold it all together um, nose is just on all loose fit just with basically stop all the overspray getting in there just like that so that area is all together and can be moving on canopy removed from the thing remember always leave yourself quite a little bit from the sprue when you cut away then you can sand down if you cut too close you might fracture on the inside so we're going to mask up these areas and then usual thing unfortunately we've got a center seam running right the way through the canopy not very nice so our normal way of doing it you've probably seen this before or if not it'll be on a separate on the actual disc itself so all we're going to do very old worn out file as we've got here keeping it flat on top and we're just going to rub off the line until you see it disappear because obviously you can see the edge of where it is remember you just want an old file and take it out so simple job just like that then obviously it's not very nice at all so then you can switch I've got here one of the master casters um, polishing ones you could use very fine files go ahead and then basically with this one I just wet it a bit okay it gets it going now remember you could always put in if you're using this on a smaller scale um, a dollop of blue tech or something up uh, putty in the inside and that way you won't crack it um, which is obviously a concern so I'm doing round movements just going round and round and round just like this to take out the scratches that we caused on the inside so there we go we're just going to keep going until those dry out and you start to hear in a moment some squeaking there we go just like that and now we've got a nice sort of cloudy finish on there okay so then we just cut to the other side wet it again okay nice round movements doing lots of little circles this is a very very fine side okay 
because all we're trying to do here is take out scratches and then you can hear the squeaking which means it's a very shiny surface it's on if it's not squeaking it's not very shiny so we're just going to carry on then I might just use a piece of kitchen towel which isn't the best for it but there we go the scratch is gone it's a little bit cloudy still um, but not much because obviously normally that takes a little bit of time to do that's just a quick one to show you um, but then you have a look along it and then you can say right okay well that's very clear you can then dip it as we said before into clear or future something like that or you can get yourself some col uh, polishing compound you could use a little bit of normal um, car polish things like that anything that's got a very very minute bite on it just to polish it up and to bring that up well fours and against if you're gonna dip um, is a good four because it gives a very very crystal clear um, finish to your canopies and you get that nice glassy look that perhaps you've seen on some models that's through dipping bad thing from dipping though if you get any overspray um, onto the future perhaps on the inside things like that if you try and rub it off you'll obviously make a, a, a cut or a, a, an abrasive um, abrasion into the surface of the future and it will ruin the finish and then you'll have to start again ways to get round it treat it as a separate spray this piece up then you can dip it afterwards and then that way um, you've got a nice crystal clear canopy when you're dealing with larger scales such as this you can come along with your clear parts and put them in all afterwards after you've finished you can get away with it because it's a join if it's a smaller kit 172s especially i always find it's easier to put it on first because then it takes care of any gaps and bits and pieces like that this one here i must admit we're going to do this as separate so they're going to go on afterwards so i'm not too worried about it so what i'm going to actually do is polish this up a little bit and then if i'm not happy with still the way it's going to look what i'm actually going to do is mask it up spray the metal and then I'm going to dip it once the metal is already on, which in this case is going to be Alclads, and we're going to do it like that. So it's all very much um, own personal choice of the way you actually do it, but for the moment we just need it all to sit on here um, to really see how it's going to look, if it's all going to line up, if there's going to be any nasty gaps um, going on, things like that. But as you can see, we've really got the Mustang shape um, pretty much down pack now and, and looking the part obviously I'm going to put some blue tack on the tops of these um, gun ports here and we can put the doors just over for the moment we can attach the flaps just loose fit at the moment sorry the ailerons on here as a loose fit and then we can get on and give it a bit of a coat of a primer all over it to really to make sure we're all happy that there's no lumps joints and bumps okay so we're going to put some um, acrylic basically primer on this you could use a primer for this I'm basically just using um, Tamiya's XF19 grey um, but you could use absolutely anything. So what we do, we just check our flow, everything's okay there. Um, this is the 0.2mm uh, needle in an Evo 2-in-1. Uh, uh, air pressure is about ooh, what are we, uh, 25 psi. Quite a high air pressure because it's just a primer coat. And dragging kits do always tend to be a bit oily. Um, so that's the reason why we do that. So what we do, we just angle you up a tad. And you'll see it's a bit better. There we go. Okay, so all we're going to do, very lightly, dusting it on over that clear part. And you just want to dust it on there for the moment. So you can have a look at exactly what you've got. So we can check the seams, the joins, panel lines, bits and pieces. And also, this is going to give a nice coat that the actual proper alclad can stick to. So we're just going to go actually everywhere with the primer. Okay, so the last thing we've done is literally we're just joining up some rivets where the riveting tool can't quite get in. So we're just putting in our own which just takes care of those little areas perhaps you get where there's no rivets so literally it's just two missing along this edge and then also what I've done is just with a, a needle um, because we're dealing on top of filler just put in a new panel line just for the wing joint to tidy it up and also it gets rid of any um, you know little step that there is there it should take care of that quite nicely so we're just popping in very lightly some little new rivets well, obviously we've um, the riveting tool which I'll show you in a second 
um, is this one here the wheel is perfect size for it just went along up to it and then put a, a row down this edge here um, by just running it down but obviously because of the curve here with the top of the, the fuselage you can't quite get in there to do it same as on the bottom here uh, we've re-riveted re um, by using the tool just run it around this edge around the tail just to put those back in and the same um, up here uh, just put in the new panel line and just re-riveted across just like that and then this first one just down here we can do with a little scriber uh, with our needle uh, we're just going to run very gently because it's on a curve we can do it freehand and just set that follow round just like that there and then obviously this is just a a little bit wet but we're very happy with the way it all turned out those wing joins there really have gone now so we don't have to worry about that now um, it's looking very good all sat in its primer so what we can do next we can basically um, go around it everywhere check it over it's all smooth give it a light sanding absolutely everywhere so we're happy that the finish on it is very nice and then we can come back then um, with some Alclad primer um, which is the black stuff which we're going to put over the top of this which will then give it really nice surface for the um, the actual um, Alclads itself to stick to. In the meantime as we're doing that we can start putting the undercarriage obviously together and bits and pieces so we're just going to have a smooth around like just down here down the tail just not very smooth. I've removed the tail wheel purely little accident on my part but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pin in and a pin into the other half and then glue the uh, the total together because in some ways um, it's a, pretty much a weak point on the kit so we can take care of that okay so as you can see we've got it all together now I've just had to another little bit of touch up it's all these little things that will make the difference afterwards so if you see them now do them now um, any little blemishes I had a tiny little blemish appearing just down here um, so that you know that needed to be done so I did that um, as you might be able to see we've got the everything on there now so basically the entire aircraft is ready to go now we are going to be using the Alclads so here we've got the gloss black now these are enamel um, or basically um, oil based they're not acrylic we usually work with water based paints these are oil very smelly um, obviously work very well ventilated area um, you know obviously because I'm talking to you guys I can't have the spray booth I've got a spray booth just off to the right here that you can't see but because I can't get the camera in there it's very hard to do so because this is slightly smelly I'm going to show you the basics and then I'll move on and I'll get it in the spray booth and away with the fumes if you haven't got a spray booth make sure your windows are open get a nice through draft going through um, and wear a respirator is your best bet you know safety first you know it is a hobby there's no point killing yourself for nothing and then we're going to come in and we're going to use the actual Alclads, um, various shades. We're basically going to go with a chrome. We want it to be a very nice, very shiny aircraft. That's the plan with this one. That's the type of effect we're going. So we've got lots of bottles of chrome um, on the go, which we're going to use as the basics for everything. And then we're going to pop around and we're going to do some other shading with the metal colours to give it a sort of um, um, a more realistic, instead of it just looking like a silver ball, um, some sort of tonals and various bits and pieces. And then we can get in there and get the other proper colours on. Okay, so now it's on with the Alclad um, gloss black base. Medium sort of air pressure, nothing exciting. Obviously I've done the bottom half already or started on it. we we'll just give this another coat now. So because it's a gloss, nice, steady, building up the coats. If you do this sort of how you do your Alclad spraying itself, i.e. nice, gentle, sweeping airbrushing and the laying it on nice, even coat so we're just working it back and forth now this stuff's quite thin to start with um, if you're used to spraying acrylic um, but obviously just the same it builds up so we're just going to go absolutely everywhere now because this stuff is very smelly as I've said before um, I'm just doing this here I'll get this over to the spray booth next so if I just show you here but you see it goes on very well it doesn't take too long to dry but obviously it's not quite as a dry um, as quick as acrylics so what we do now I'll just get this sprayed all over gloss black over in the spray bay okay so as you can see been drying all overnight and we've got this very nice gloss black finish um, now obviously because of the um, the actual way that the, um, the the injection molding is done and the pressures they're under you get quite a, a speckly finish what you could do if you wanted a totally mirror finish to the model you could then polish it with a very very fine sanding stick or something like a Mastercaster's miracle polisher something like that and to give it a total glossy finish now we don't want to totally be this one like a mirror we want it to be a nice very very depth shine to it almost like a chrome but we don't want it to be like a mirror because um, obviously you know we don't want to just go totally over the top of it 
So what I'm going to do is leave it as it is. But in some areas I've been in and polished up um, little panels here and there just to give it a little bit of deference. So hopefully when the actual alcad goes on, we're going to use the chrome here, it will be quite a, a, a sort of a matte finish on like large areas. And every now and again you're going to get extra shiny little spots. Also I've taken into here, I've got a tiny little blemish which I noticed. Um, so I needed to take care of that. So I've just sanded it off. We might need to put a bit more black on that. But for the moment we're going to have a go at the underside and see how we get on down there now when you're using um, our clads you know always <clears throat> get your compressor um, up to speed we'll just close the bottom valve there um, <clears throat> and then we want to have the tank full up but we don't want the pressure very high we really want it to about sort of 12 to 15 psi very light because we're going to do very light dusty coats just misting it on leave it for a few minutes come back mist it on it's not like when you're normally spraying perhaps acrylics or even enamels where you can put on a coat of paint walk away let it dry this we're going to do lots of little coats and misting it on time after time after time okay so we've got uh some alkaline in there remember good old shake with the bowl and make sure you put the lid on afterwards because if you tip it over one it goes for miles and it's an expensive mistake check your flow you're very happy with the way the flow is I'm just going to turn it down a little bit that's it so we've got that down really it's about sort of 12 psi okay checking your flow you're happy with the flow literally we're going to come along and just misting a light coat on this wing just like that. Now the thing is the alkaline will dry almost immediately but if you've got any blemishes like we've got a small one here um, as you can see there that little mark that's a little tiny blemish which you couldn't see because we're using the chrome every little blemish is going to stand out. And the thing is with it it dries extremely quick so you should be able to go back on time and time again with the next coat. Just keep building up the coats So we're getting there to a very nice silvery finish as you can see very very quickly so we're just going to come in from the other direction right there that's it and as you can see very very quick to get a very very shiny finish okay so we just come in from the other side now and we're just going to put mr coat on this wing down here and then up the idea with also using the black um, as a base is it's reflecting a bit like a mirror. Um, all the light is going to be reflected back um, to make a, a nice little line. So as you can see, we've got a few little areas which I do believe are just a little um, where the spraying hasn't been as flat as on some areas as perhaps you can see just here. Um, but we should be able to polish those out afterwards. So we're just going to let that dry a moment and then we can put another coat on and we'll keep building up the coats okay so here we are we're just continuously building up nice little light passes absolutely everywhere and just building and building and building so you do an area you spray it there we go we've run out now um, and then you come back and as you can see you're building up the layers um, we want this to be very very shiny uh, to give it that real metal color um, you know I want this one to be a sort of a very special one because it's actually for my dad so belated Christmas present but as you can see, it's very good. You have to be careful how you touch this because you don't want to leave any greasy prints. But it's extremely shiny, very, very glossy. Just how I'm wanting it to come out. Remember with um, our clads, don't flood the area. As soon as you flood the area, you're going to end up with a situation where um, you get like a whiteness to happen. Two things that is. That could either be moisture in your paint, uh, which is causing that, or it could be that you're actually putting on too heavy and obviously it's drying with the alcohol or the cellulose coat at the top so we're just trying to mist this on as I say you're building up layers not painting it on you're almost just misting it round and the lighter your coat the shinier a finish it will have so we just turn our air pressure down a little bit more because that's what I tend to do, I tend to turn the air pressure down the nearer and the heavier coats it's got on there and that will give you an even shinier finish and that's what we're trying to do here 
every now and again check your needle obviously your airbrush because you're doing very light fine coats you just need it to gently build up the way to think about alkalines is you have to imagine it's almost plating you're not painting on a coat of paint you're plating over the paint that's on there so if you've got any imperfections all it's going to do is it's going to show it off and will not cover it by any means whatsoever Also, the other thing you don't want to do is artificially dry this stuff off. Don't come at it with a hair dryer or something like that. Obviously, we're not too worried about this top area here because it's going to be painted up anyway. But we're just trying to... What I'm actually going to do is give this four or five quite heavy coats as we've done here. This one here has been sort of the first of the lighter coats we're going to do. We're going to work on the top, we're going to get nice cushioning down. The other thing as well, very, very fragile, so we don't want to be, you know, hitting it around or scratching it or anything else like that. So what we're going to do in a moment, we're going to put another full coat over it again. I'm going to do the same with the underside. At the moment it's got about two heavy coats down there. Two more heavy coats, then we're going to brush on probably three or four nice little light misty coats and see how we go like that. And there we go, one bottle of Alclad empty to make one very, very shiny Mustang. Now I don't know how well it's actually picking up the camera, but it's very, very shiny. Um, obviously you know it's got lots of coats on it so where normally it dries over time you know between coats this isn't so i don't want to handle it too much at this point the other thing with alclads greasy fingers doesn't like it it's going to show up it's literally like a mirror so obviously you know if you can be handling it and you've got greasy if you have got some limp gloves things like that then you'll be okay but just to have a a bit of a look as you can see um how well you can actually see it it's actually reflecting off the ceiling in here um it is extremely very very shiny um, almost to a chrome finish. What we can actually do is polish this very, very slightly. Um, there, it's not perfect. There is some little imperfections. Um, there's some little hairs got in there, um, which will um, not a lot you can do because if you try and take them out now, it's going to ruin your finish. But there we go. That's working with our clad. Um, that's how simple it is to sort of get a, a chrome finish. Um, it's extremely shiny. Now, obviously, um, the trouble being that um, decals, things like that, that go on next, do tend to show up um, extremely well, um, the carrier film, because it's showing through the actual um, metal itself. Um, so obviously, uh, from that point of view, um, you have to be a bit careful how you're going to do it. If you try and spray future or clear um, this stuff, um, over it you will lose all this lovely shininess finish that you've got um, for those of you that have seen the other show that I did on the uh, metal finished aircraft I did a special using acrylics with alclads and you know all types of trouble we have with those same thing if you're going to do this the only real way you're going to be able to get this to a nice gloss finish and not lose this shininess you've got is to hand paint it on now to do that is what we're going to do on this one shortly you're going to have to have a very nice brush, a very soft brush, that will gently lay it on. You put on a coat, you leave it for literally a couple of hours, you come back, you put on another coat, perhaps as many coats as it's going to take. Two or three is normally the rule, and then that way when the decals do go on, they'll sit onto a nice surface, um, and you, because it's not as highly reflective, obviously, as the metal is on this, then you won't get see the carrier film around the outside, and then you can give it another coat over the top to seal them in, and then you can come back with your weathering and you go. You you are going to lose this lovely metalness for a little bit you're going to lose there's nothing you can do about that 
unless you've got decals with no carrier film on there at all um, and you cut them round perhaps or something like that then you'll be okay trouble with that is sometimes you get lifting on the edge you know those little areas that carry it round are there for a reason um, but there we go this is this one now done obviously we've still got undercarriage doors bits and pieces to go which we'll do shortly we'll bring them all over get them all together and then we can go through them all but from the point of view of working with the Alclad that gives you a rough idea of what it takes to get this type of finish on there um, but as I say, it's very nicely done. It's all come out very well. Obviously, we've got to put on other colours that will go on there, but you really need to keep handling down to a minimum. Already, you've got bluing, um, you know, like metal does get you get that blue effect when it's near different temperatures. It's getting that even as well. Um, where